but every time I hit that remote and remote start that car in the morning, I have a grin on my face from ear to ear. It is one of the best things. It is the best thing that I've ever owned in my life. Is that a little bit close? I'm in probably the most exciting vehicle that I think I've ever driven in my life and I think now at this age I've owned a lot of cars and I've had the, the great opportunity to demo a lot of vehicles in my time but I was just not expected uh, the feeling that this Ram TRX would have given me. Now I picked this up um, from the Gold Coast Ram dealership on Monday, it's Friday today, I've been driving this around as a daily driver for about five days and I'm just... I'm just ecstatic by the performance of this vehicle. Now, what we were gonna do, we we're gonna shoot a Patriot garage on it. And after I drove the car for a couple of days, I really thought that that was not gonna do any justice to what the Ram TRX was all about. So today we're gonna to give you a special episode of Patriot Garage and a real life test on what the Ram TRX was all built for. The world that we're living in at the moment, the way that you know all of the vehicle manufacturers and the world is going, everybody is so focused on renewable energy and save the planet and all the rest of it. I don't know what they are feeding the engineering or the design team to come up with a concept of a vehicle like this in this day and age. A vehicle like this is designed by a team that are genuine enthusiasts. Somebody throws out the idea, let's put a 702 brake horsepower Hellcat engine into a Ram 1500. And let's pump the track by eight inches. Let's put remote res, live valve shocks underneath the thing. And somebody throws out the idea, let's give it a Baja mode. Like what were these guys thinking? And to that team there, I say thank you. In the world now of going back, everybody's going from V8s back to V6s and petrol cars to diesels. Let's bring the heart back to performance vehicles. Let's put something into the market that we know red-blooded car enthusiasts are gonna buy. We are just around the corner from the racetrack. Here we go, the new Ram TRX, the most unbelievable road-registered vehicle I've ever driven. Now we're down on the private property. We are here at a rally track and an off-road track where this video is gonna get really interesting. But before we do, I'm just gonna run you through the high level things that make the TRX a TRX. This is not gonna be one of my in-depth walk around, show you underneath every latch. I'm gonna show you what's relevant to the TRX and then we're gonna get straight into the action. So let's go and take a look. TRX is the thing that gives it away over the Ram 1500. Now there is some fundamental differences here besides the obvious, which is the 702 horsepower Hellcat engine. And I'll get to that in just a second. They've made some pretty major changes here. So they've taken the Ram 1500, they've gone and stuffed that motor in, they've got a torque flight eight speed behind it. 
but they've also pumped the car eight inches wider and made the track six inches wider. So the thing's gonna be a lot more stable um, off-road. You can see right at the front, all of this styling is purposeful. Everything that you see here, all of these vents are for a reason. There's a 30 litre air box underneath here, which again, I'll get to you in a second. 50% of the airflow for the supercharger, for the twin screws coming in through the top here, and the other 50% is coming in through here. And if you see here, they've even gone as far as actually cutting out the RAM lettering to get all of that air in um, to supply that, I think it's 2380 cc, it's a big supercharger, you know? Now on the sides as well, you can see vents that go past the headlight and the air actually exits just in front of the driver's door. I'm not sure whether this is feeding the air box or whether this is to do with cooling the brakes. The front axle, they've pushed that forward 20 mils. So they've moved it forward to accommodate a 35 inch tire, which comes standard on this thing here, which means in Australia, you can legally fit 37s. Now, sitting underneath here is probably one of the coolest parts of the Ram TRX, which is the Bilstein, I think they call it active valving, but essentially what it is, live valving suspension. So as you select different modes, it's adjusting all of the compression and the rebound in the shocks. You've got 13 inches of travel standard, like ridiculous. Uh, so it's adjusting all of that on the fly, depending on the setting that you're in. The other things that it changes is it changes your steering ratio as well. So it gives you more or less input depending on which mode um, that you actually select. Now coming down the side here, there's a few differences. Again, I said I'm not gonna get into detail. You can see all that in the video, um, but coming down the back in here, so big differences on this over the Ram 1500. This thing's actually got a Dana 60 axle in the back, not a 44 that the standard Ram 1500 comes with obviously to handle the power, bigger ring and pinion, bigger axles, uh, five link rear end. And then you can actually see here, you can see the active terrain dynamics, they're calling it um, with Bilstein, which is your live valving like I spoke about just before. The shocks on this thing are definitely not for show. When you go between sports mode to Baja mode to your automatic mode, towing mode, then you've got a mud mode and you've got a rock crawling mode as well. Oh, and that's something else that's ridiculous. Factory rear locker and a, and a really harsh front LSD. So when you're in your mud mode, your rock mode in low range, um, this thing, I haven't experienced it myself yet. I've been doing the research. It's fundamentally twin locked um, front and rear. This thing here, they've gone with a constant four wheel drive. Standard Ram 1500 is uh, rear wheel drive. Uh, but this has got obviously a torque split controller. So depending on what mode you're in, it'll send more uh, power, more torques to the rear end. I'm not sure what the split is in different modes, um, but it's definitely noticeable. Say for example, if I'm in Baja mode um, on the straight and I tip the thing into the corner and mash the gas, very, very dominant um, understeer, like really, really noticeable understeer. If I do that in sports mode, the understeer is a little bit less. If I put the thing in auto, like kind of standard drive mode, um, it's a little bit less again. So coupled with what it's doing with the valving there, with the compression and the rebound, and also that torque split from front to rear, which I'm not 100% across on what mode does what, um, the understeer on this thing is very, very dominant. But once again, it's not what this car's been designed for. This car is designed to go around racetracks. So I'll give you my thoughts on that um, as we go through it. Now, I'm sure you guys are obviously gonna wanna see really quickly um, what's actually sitting underneath the hood. Doesn't look that impressive because of that big air box on top, but that air box there is not for show. I'll pop the bonnet. Let's have a look at that supercharger and that, um, that 6.2 litre Hemi. Now, popping the hood on this thing, um, I'm gonna call plastic. Oh, nah, plastic. I was gonna say aluminium, but that's definitely plastic. Super light, so there's a couple of things that they've changed there. Look at this friggin' thing. It's like 30 litres, it might be 26 or 28 litres, I'm not sure 100%, but it's about a 30 litre air box uh, feeding that 2.4 litre twin screw supercharger. Now, if you get down in here and have a look, then you can see the supercharger sitting on top. 880 Newton metres of torque. I can't, I'm not, you're gonna hear me say this all day, 702 horsepower. 702 horsepower, 702 horsepower. 11 pounds, the thing is running. And I'll tell you how I know that in just a second. Um, I know everybody's gonna ask because of what we're all about, but look, this is not the Ram workhorse. It's just not. 
They've derated the towing on this to three and a half tons from four and a half ton with the standard 1500. Your payload on this thing is about 750 kilos and the car still weighs three ton. So realistically, if you were looking for a Ram as a pure blooded Ram workhorse, this is not the car for you. If you're looking, if you want to be the coolest tradie on the job site, this is definitely the car that you need to buy. But if you're more like me and you love just beating up on your stuff, for us, I think pre-running keeps coming to mind. I mean, ultimately, this is a pre-runner. So for the race team now, imagine me, Christian, Ashton, my brother pre-running in this. Um, that's what it's all about. And this is what I'm gonna put it, uh, through its paces today. So quick look at the interior and let's hit the track. Okay, again, I don't wanna waffle on the big differences. I'm gonna leave that running and you can just listen to that in the background and just enjoy it, right? Um, the big differences, um, and there, there is quite a few of them. Interior styling, very, very race. Um, Alcatera, so um, you got suede trim, suede trim here, um, the kind of race style cutoff steering wheel at the bottom. A lot of carbon fiber bits inside this thing as well. The big thing that you'll notice is uh, your screen change. You've got a, a 12 inch audio thing, what, what, whatever they call them these days. Six auxiliary switches, uh, so if you want to wire in, you know, your spotlights or any other stuff, air compressors, all the rest of it, the auxiliary switches are in there. Now, the biggest thing with this one here is going to be the performance page uh, dashboard. I'm going to run you through that throughout the day. As I keep changing the car into different modes, I'll show you why I'm changing it into different modes. But you've got your Apple CarPlay and all of the other things that you'd think that, um, you know, that you would want in a modern, comfortable car. You got a big plate here, so you got your build number on your TRX. So you can see here, V8 motor, supercharged 6.2 litre Hemi. Like, you know, you just, if anybody gets into the car with you that doesn't know much about cars, at least that can kind of give them a little bit of guidance on what they're getting into. You can see here, 2380cc twin screw IHI supercharger is on the plate. Um, you got the horsepower. <laughs> Again, this goes back to what I said at the start, you know, the creative that is happening at this company to produce, uh, put a car like this into production is just, it's just, more, I love it. Like, I absolutely love it. Now, underneath here, something else that I just think is absolutely amazing. We'll get a shot of this in a second. The TRX stands for T-Rex, right? And there is no two ways about it. This thing has been brought out to blow the doors off the Ford uh, Raptor. They've got here imprinted into the mat in the bottom, a scale graph of a T-Rex beside a Velociraptor. So they're just showing, they're just asserting their dominance um, over everybody else around the world. And this is why my first car that I ever bought when I was 17 year old uh, came from this group. And now they've just totally re-exhilarated my love of cars with this thing for five days i've not got the smile off my face like i said i wasn't going to blow this out i did i'm passionate about this thing i love this thing let's hit the track first feature and <laughs> something that i'm really enjoying using at the traffic lights is the launch control now this thing here does zero to 100 in 4.5 seconds and runs the quarter mile in 12.3 seconds. Now, I remember when I was into street cars, when I was like 17, if you were running 12s then, you were fast, dude. Like, you were proper fast. And now, you're getting this kind of out of a ram truck. So what I'll do is I'll stop on this little section here, and we'll engage the launch control, and I'll kind of show you how it works. Apply full throttle, release the brake. There we go, look at that. Shifting on the paddles. Up over the crest, so that's 123 kilometers an hour, 140. The acceleration of this thing is just intense. So I might see if I can just, if I can get it kind of sliding through this little bit of mud here, get that slide started. There we go, perfect. Now you really got to rev it 
like they're sat at 6,000 RPM, but I'm kind of finding it wants a bit more than that. Good one up there, okay. Now what I'll do is, let's chuck it into another mode here. Let's go into Baja. All right, so Baja mode changes a little bit more. Transmission goes into Baja mode. Like I said earlier, I'm not sure exactly what the changes are and what that distribution is um, from front to rear. Stability control and suspension go into Baja mode. So this is where it's gonna start softening everything up to take those bigger hits. And the steering stays in the sports mode. So um, you have got that maximum sort of input on the wheel there. So let's just give it a little bit of a crack in Baja mode. We'll hit those same corners again. And uh, maybe you can see on camera corner what the difference is to the way that I'm reacting to the car. I can feel it is so much softer now. Um, you can feel that the shocks are really doing their job like an off-road car. It's a completely different thing, completely different beast. You know, the live valving is not just for show. Um, the live valving is definitely, they've put the, the research and the work into it. Just gonna wash that mud. Get that slide going. Bring it around. There we go. That's better. Hold that gear a bit more. You really got to get that gear right before you go into the corners. The one thing with the paddles um, that I don't like is the uh, the paddles. They're very they're very slow to react. I've been finding that was a little bit better. I might try and use the shifter and see if I can get... Yeah, that's better. There we go. So you can actually, with the shifter, the thing is um, it's grabbing gears much, much quicker than the paddles are. The paddle throw is really, really long. And I find that there's there's definitely a delay there on the paddles um, before it actually shifts gears. This is, this is definitely much, much better. Unfortunately, we're going to have to call it. We're going to have to call it a day for a couple of reasons. The rain set in, you can see the water on the track. This is ultimately a rally track. Um, and what we really don't want to do is destroy the track for these guys. The second issue, we can't get the drones up in the air. So the filming, if we can't film what we need to film, um, there is uh, no point in destroying the track just for the fun of it as much as I'd absolutely love to. You can see the amount of water on the track now. The rain has just been relentless. Look at the skies, it's not gonna stop. But what I am gonna do to finish the episode is we've well, gotta throw some donuts, right? Like surely that's something that I have to do. I've just spoken to the owner, he said, mate, go for it, give it a crack. Um, but please do not destroy the track. And that's a fair call. But I'll get into one of these paddocks here. Uh, we'll do some skids and we might um, we might wind it up there and then I'll give you my final verdict on the new Ram TRX. Hey Pete, you copy mate? Copy. Come out into the middle of this paddock here man. Donuts around the camera car? What do you reckon? Alright, just stay there for a second, will you? I don't know if, I don't know if Pete's going to this.
That's where we're gonna to have to close it. Was that a little bit close? Anyway, um, what are my thoughts on the new Ram TRX? Well, I would absolutely own one. I would absolutely own one. But I think you get the gist. This thing is built for off-road. This is built for off-road, high-performance racing, 702 horsepower, over 800 newton meters um, of torque. That eight-speed gearbox is absolutely amazing. The shocks are so friggin' impressive. What don't I like about the Ram TRX? Well, really, there isn't enough that I don't like that I wouldn't buy one. I think the paddle shift is a little bit slow, uh, and this is if I had to pick on it. I think the paddle shift is a little bit slow. I'd love to see that reaction a little bit quicker. Uh, a brake upgrade if I bought one, um, definitely, but that's because of the way that I drive. I think for the, the guy that's gonna buy one or girl that's gonna buy one um, to cruise around on the streets and go for coffee and all the rest of it, it's definitely sufficient, but what a waste of a car. Like if that's what you were buying one to do, to show pony around, that is such a waste of a vehicle because this thing is not just a tarted up Ram 1500. This is a whole new platform. This is a whole new beast. And I think this is the most exciting vehicle um, that I've seen out uh, come out any production facility anywhere in the world for such a long period of time. And yes, I would absolutely buy one. And to Ram Trucks Australia, the only authorised Ram distributor here in Australia, thank you very much for lending me the vehicle. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if I do get my hands on one, maybe we'll come out, uh, back out here and I'll show you really what this thing can do. Welcome to six months later. You can see behind me, I did it. I had to do it. Now, here's another little quick story. So, as you picked up in that video, that one there was a loan car or a rental as, as we like to call it. When I picked that car up from Ram on the Gold Coast on Monday, I got from Ram Gold Coast back to Patriot HQ where we are right now, and I called uh, my contacts at Ram Trucks Australia. I said, I don't care what you have to do, get me one. And I was told that there was a five year waiting list on them and some words were said. And I got a phone call back the next morning and I got one. I got one of the first Ram TRXs uh, delivered into Australia. Now, I'm gonna attack the biggest question that I know we're gonna get. What's it worth? Well, depending on the dealer and options and availability, let's call it $250,000. That's what this truck here is worth behind me. Now for 250 grand, yes, that is a bucket load of money uh, here in Australia. So in the US, I think they retail at about 100,000 US dollars. The way I kind of justified that, I suppose, well, number one, it was Sarah, I'm getting you a Ram TRX. And she was just, hell no, she loves her 1500. She's finally got it to where she wants it. That build is exactly where she wants that car. Um, and I said, well, look, the family has to have one. So I'm gonna sell my 2500. So I got rid of the white 2500 uh, when the TRX arrived. Now at that $250,000, and I think with most rare cars, um, it's actually turned into a bit of an investment because a really good friend of mine who couldn't get one inside of that uh, waiting list, he actually found one uh, online and I think he paid just under 300 grand for it. So the way I look at it, I've made $50,000 on the car already. There is actually one on car sales for sale right now at 350,000 Australian dollars. Um, so again, it's somebody who's bought it just to resell it, whether they'll get that or not, I'm not sure. Um, but typically speaking, rare cars with really high wait times, uh, they always appreciate in value. I, I hear stories all the time about guys with, you know, Ferrari Pistas and RS Porsches that order two or three of the new ones every time uh, that they're released because when they become available, they end up with a big uh, waiting list and there's a lot of people who make a lot of money out of doing that. So that's not the justification for buying it, but definitely a big advantage with buying a rare car. I mean, for me, this vehicle is not, it's not a show pony car. This is not to go and get 
coffee down at the beach on Sunday. Well, I've actually done two pre-running events in it since I bought it. So I pre-ran in Don River in it, and I also pre-ran at the McIntyre 900 uh, with the kits. So the justification there was as a pre-runner, a car that I wanted to use. And look, when I was really young, I only ever wanted a supercar, you know, who didn't have an F40 up on their wall or a GT3 RS or, you know, something uh, really cool. And this is my supercar. This is what I replaced that kind of childhood dream with. To me, this is as good as any supercar gets, you know, 12 second uh, quarter mile passes, 702 horsepower, big brakes, but it's something that I can actually use outside of, you know, running down to Main Beach and getting a coffee on the weekend. It is a three ton supercar. There is no other way to describe it. Am I happy with it? Six months down the track. I wake up at about four o'clock every morning and I normally start the car at about half past four, quarter to five every morning in the dark. My neighbors hate me, but every time I hit that remote and remote start that car in the morning, still, even this morning, I have a grin on my face from ear to ear. It is one of the best things. It is the best thing that I've ever owned in my life. Yeah, for multiple different reasons. So yes, 100%, I would definitely, in a heartbeat, buy one of these things again. I still chuck my dirt bike in the back of it and go riding on the weekend. We still use it going out camping. It's my daily driver. I drive it to and from work. You come past uh, Patriot Campers any time of the day, you'll see it parked out the front. And then I go and do the pre-running. We're gonna be taking this thing out to Fink with us uh, this year. So we're gonna be doing all of our uh, mid-pace pre-running in this, and then we'll use the pre-runner to do all the high-speed pre-running and confirm all the notes. So I'll start with um, one of the first things I actually did to the Ram TRX is I took it down to the, straight down to the boys at High Talk. How do we get a little bit more power out of this thing? So what we did with it is we've put in an air box um, and we've also put a tune into it and we've gone with bigger injectors and we've also changed the boost. So we've gone from 11 pounds of boost to about 15 pounds of boost. The car went on the hub dyno at the rears, 560 horsepower to 707 horsepower at the rear wheels. Now I was driving around like that for a couple of weeks and we actually melted the fuel pump in it. The fuel pumps in these, they got two uh, fuel pumps in it and they're controlled by two different ECUs. So we melted the fuel pump. We had to go through that, that whole process. We put a new fuel pump in it and we did exactly the same thing again. So currently as it stands, uh, this thing's back to a factory tune. Um, we've still got the bigger boost in it and we've put the factory injectors back in it. Um, but until we can kind of resolve that fuel pump issue, the boys down at High Talk are trying to, uh, trying to solve it. We can't find anything that's available right now um, to get that, that fuel pressure up or the fuel delivery up to keep up with those bigger injectors making that power but I can tell you at 707 horsepower, it was a hell of a lot of fun. In a future video, once we get all that dialed in, um, I'll come back to you and, and I'll let you know what the performance figures kind of went to. Now, starting at the front, um, really quite simple what I've done at the front here. Uh, I've put a Addictive Desert Designs pre-runner bar on. This is a company out of the United States. I don't think anybody's representing them uh, over here in Australia, but I spoke to those guys. The styling is what I really wanted. Now, on the bar, I uh, put on a set of rigid lights. I'm just starting to use uh, rigid on a, on a few of our builds. Uh, the light projection quality on these rigid lights is like nothing else that I've ever used, and I've used a couple of different brands. But what I've done is I've done the six inch 360 series on the top. I've got the two inners in white, the two outers in amber, just to give me some different light uh, for dust um, conditions. And I've also got a 30 inch light bar underneath. Tons of light. Uh, factory, the headlights are really good on these things, uh, but the projection of that widespread of light now, and especially when we're gonna be doing uh, pre-running out at Fink, we normally get back in the dark. Um, so that's gonna be something that's really handy. Um, we've, got, we've still got the factory um, uh, recovery points mounted to the front and I've done some custom work on the grill underneath so I put in the 484 uh, number in yellow. When we're out pre-running, uh, one of the prerequisites with Motorsports Australia is that we've actually got the number of the race car so you'll see I've got the yellow 484 sticker up the top for the trophy truck and I've got the, the yellow down on the bash plate so just a, a couple of little accents of yellow. Now coming around the side, um, I think the thing that I'm most happy with is the wheel and tyre package from Bob Jane Team Arts. Uh, unbelievably, when I got the car, I went down and saw Michael down at Bob Jane Team Arts in the rain, and he's like, yeah, dude, these are the different wheels uh, that we've got in stock. 
I've gone with the KMC GRS uh, in the, the, I think they're actually anodized or powder coated in the machine look um, with the black kind of fake bead locks. We can't run bead locks here in Australia. Another thing I'm really impressed, um, Yokohama Geo Landers XATs. I did want that pre-runner look, so I didn't want a real aggressive mud terrain. These things here, they're in a, a 37, so 37 inch tire is, is completely legal on a TRX. They come out with 35s like you saw earlier on in the video. Um, really impressed with these tyres. Like again, three ton truck and I drive it like a supercar on the streets legally. Um, so the, the wheel and tyre package I'm stoked with. I have not touched the suspension and I'm not going to touch the suspension. The only thing that I've done is I've put a levelling kit in the front. So it's about, a, I think it's about a three quarter of an inch spacer just to get that front sitting up and kind of level the car up a little bit more. When you hit the gas in one of these things, and especially with the four wheel drive, they squat and they squat like a race car. You know, they squat like a pre-runner or even my trophy truck, they really sit down in the ass. And um, I've seen a couple of videos of me, you know, when we hit it and it just, it, it looks incredible, sounds incredible. A massive, massive change. The biggest change that you'll see to my TRX, a lot of people ask me whether it's got custom paint on it and it actually doesn't. All we've done is uh, the team down at Codex uh, here on the Gold Coast have done a bush wraps uh, matte clear PPF wrap over the entire car. When we get round to the back, I'll tell you the reason that we went with that. It wasn't just for the looks, um, but the look of this thing compared to the standard uh, graphite or granite or whatever they call it, you put the two of them side by side and this looks like a completely different car. It looks like it's actually been painted and that's something that makes my truck look, um, look quite unique. So at the back I've matched the front bar uh, to the rear bar. So I've gone with the ADD rear bar. Uh, it's the same styling as the front and ADD make a couple of different styles um, that suit the TRX. Um, I've put in a P-Core Trail Connect harness uh, at the back, so when we're charging, we've got the Anderson plug on there, and then we've got two rigid lights in the rear as well. Uh, the lights in the rear, I don't use them a whole lot, to be honest with you, but when we're at camp, it's good to have that light uh, kind of flooding all the way around. In the back, um, I've mounted, I've actually mounted in the cab, I've put in a ARB twin compressor under the floor in one of the, one of the underfloor uh, pockets. And if you can see in the back here, I'll put the little coupling there so the hose reels and everything live under the back seat. Again, when we're pre-running, quick inflation, quick deflation. Um, so actually tied deflators are something that I'm gonna be fitting to this real soon. I'll come back to you in the next video. Unfortunately, the 37 doesn't fit up in the factory position. We tried everything, uh, but it hits the bar and hits the fuel tank. So we've got that mounted up in there. Of course, Red Arc Go Block, that's locked in there, pad locked in there, lives in there permanently. When we're out pre-running, I'll throw a Dometic uh, CFX 55 in the back there, and we normally run that um, fridge straight off the Go Block or any other accessories that I want to charge when I'm out camping. Um, the Red Arc Go Block for me now is a staple. I have one fitted in pretty much everything that I own now. Or say in my boat, I've got the cradle fitted. When I go out on the weekend, go fishing or camping or whatever, I'll take the go block straight out of here, drop it straight into the cradle and it's all connected up to the boat. So that's a, that's a really good bit of gear. I've gone with a, a GME XRS on the interior. Of course, there isn't anything else that I would go with. And I've just put the small GME whip on there. Again, I really wanted that kind of pre-runner look. The big advantage of this whip here is it's that it's uh, broken in the center, so car parks and that sort of thing. Normally, I leave the top of the whip just underneath the back seat. Um, Sarah does do the shopping in this thing. She does use it. I drive around, going to car parks, whatever. So normally, I leave that under the back seat. And generally speaking, with this car, when we're out pre-running, there's no one who can even get close to keeping up with us in another vehicle anyway, so we are well out of range. So I don't really need that long distance. Um, you can see here a couple of, couple of the marks on the back that the PPF have really taken care of. And actually a really good, good uh, understanding here on what the PPF can do. I've got a big ding in the side here. This was from pre-running the McIntyre 900. The boys, the twins actually uh, saw it. I went off the track a little bit and it picked up a big stick and the stick come up and bashed into the side of the car. But there isn't any damage whatsoever to the actual paint. So I can get a paintless dent removal guy to come in, knock that ding out, tear the PPF off and put a new skin and PPF on. Probably saved me a couple of grand in getting the whole um, rear quarter resprayed. Um, but that's about it. That's about a wrap on my Ram TRX. The best car by far that I've ever owned. I've owned a lot of, lot of street machines. I've owned a lot of Japanese import cars. 
um, and obviously the Land Cruisers and the full drives that we're famous for, but this thing is just, this, this is my supercar, you know? I, I didn't dream of a TRX when I was a kid because they weren't around, but if they were, that's what I would have dreamed of. So I think as far as bucket list goes, um, getting your dream car, big tick for me. Uh, Ram USA, Ram Trucks Australia. Actually, I'm gonna finish on this too. I know you can get your hands on grey imports, guys, but I would strongly recommend if you're gonna spend that sort of investment, get into an actual authorised Ram dealer. Parts are coming in for these guys. You got the support at every capital city and then some all the way around Australia. Um, and if you're gonna make that sort of investment, you definitely want to know that you have the support, the spare parts and the knowledge uh, to back that up should something go wrong. So that's a big, big tip for me. And to the guys down there as well, um, thank you so much for getting me into a TRX as quickly as you did. And as soon as you know there's an update coming or a new one coming, make sure you call me first because I will definitely put my name down to order another one. All right, that's it for the Ram TRX, Patriot Garage. Hope you enjoyed, we'll see you next time.